So could this be India's uh, moment in terms of uh, the Reagan uh, Volcker moment uh, uh, with Modi leading the government and uh, Raghuram Rajan at uh, the RBI? What would that mean? And what does the strong mandate in any case mean uh, for the market? Manishi Rechaudhary from BNP Paribas Securities now joins in. Manishi, hi, good morning. Want to first address the issue of uh, RBI governor? Uh, you know, uh, A, do you get a sense that uh, he will be retained? And B, do you think, uh, you know, the, the kind of parallels that are, that are being drawn right now, uh, they are justified? See, first of all, in uh, response to your first question, I honestly have no idea because I have no insider knowledge to how the government the new government is thinking but all I can tell you is that uh, he should be retained because the policies that the uh, the RBI governor is following uh, in terms of inflation targeting are perfectly justified in the current circumstances you know so I think it, it definitely makes sense to pursue a same set of policies and for that purpose I mean uh, you know for the sake of continuity and for having you know a really strong voice the top of the central bank, it is imperative that we maintain that, uh, you know, that same regime in the Reserve Bank of India. Um, uh, your second question was whether the parallels that are being drawn are, you know, are appropriate. I think, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, difficult to ignore the similarities. You know, it's, uh, that's why the report that you have in front of you, that's called India's Reagan-Thatcher moment. You know, which was the title of our report as well. And um, but the circumstances were different, but uh, at the same time there are similarities like the stagflation that the United States was going through in the, in the early to mid-1980s. And I think, um, yeah, you know, I think the, the, the kind of uh, policies that were appropriate at that time, um, in a sense, I the situation in India is also warranting those kind of policies. So I think at one level there are similarities between the, the, the United Kingdom in the late 70s when Mrs. Thatcher took over or the, the US in the 1980s when uh, President Reagan took over and the situation that we are staring at right now. Okay, Manishi, hi, good to see you in this morning. Uh, from what we have seen in terms of the rally for the Nifty, how much of this decisiveness that we've seen from the mandate which is coming for the new government is already factored in? See, um, if you look at um, the three or four days before the election results were announced uh, and till now what has happened, I think the market has moved up somewhere around 10% or so. And as a consequence, the valuation of the market has moved up from around, let's say, 14.5 times to somewhere close to 15.7 or so. You know, so that's uh, roughly about 10%. Now, at the current levels, the market is still not egregiously expensive. It compares to the long-term average of about 15 times. And if you extend that analogy to price to book multiples, it is pretty close to the long-term averages. I think it currently we're at about 2.4 times, while the long-term average is 2.3 times. Now, having said this, there are significant divergences between different sectors. So you have the likes of metals and mining, or the second-tier infrastructure companies trading still, even after this rally, trading at low valuations while you have the likes of the defensives, consumer staples or pharmaceuticals, trading at 30 plus multiples. So I think what we're seeing now is some kind of a rotation away from the expensive uh, defensives into the relatively cheap cyclicals. Um, one must uh, exert caution. One must uh, you know, have some caution in going the whole hog as far as this rotation is concerned. But I think this rotation is likely to continue for some more time. You know, partly because those relatively cheaper domestic cyclicals are under-owned, both by retailers and by institutional investors, and partly the valuation gap between them is still significant. So I would think that as a com combination of this, the, uh, the overall market may still continue to move up. Um, Indian market always moves in a, in a step function, you know, where you have almost a vertical rally, then takes a breather for a while. It may continue. Yeah, it may happen this time around as well. But that would not really worry me about the longer term. Manishi, your Sensex target of 28,000 still calls for what? Uh, closer to uh, 
you know, 15 to 20 percent upside even from current levels. Uh, what would lead that kind of yeah. upside? Uh, and uh, what would be the downside risk to this market? Uh, uh, you know, for what could go wrong? All right. Right. You know, if we're uh, look at it this way, currently we're at about 24,500 and our target 28,000 by the end of 2014. Yeah, it's possibly somewhere around 12 to 15 percent up from here. In response to your first question, which is what would drive that upside, I think it would predominantly be the domestic cyclicals, which include financials, industrials, select consumer discretionaries, and some of the policy-related sectors, you know, for example, energy, oil and gas, or even telecommunication, where there's a combination of policy stability and um, the worst of tariff competition being behind us. You know, so that is the core set, I think, that would drive this rally. Having said this, I must also point out that some part of this rally could also come from select defensives, particularly the exporters. Um, we still remain positive on IT services over the medium term, even though they have underperformed in the near term. And, uh, the rally would mainly be led by the domestic cyclicals and the policy-driven sectors, but at the same time, one should not ignore the, the, the defensives, particularly the exporters entirely you know, IT services and the merchandise exporters. Mm -hmm. Because we think that the developed market recovery theme is still intact. And, um, uh, you know, particularly developed market CapEx is likely to benefit the likes of Taiwanese tech companies or the Indian IT service providers. So that's as far as the drivers of this rally are concerned. Um, sorry, Anuj, I think you had a second part to your question. Would you care to repeat yeah, that for me? My question was, what could be the downside risk to this market? Uh, what could go wrong? Ah, yes. Yeah. See, I personally think that uh, on an India-specific basis, the risks are very limited right now. I mean, well, one could have a short-term correction in the market, some degree of underperformance as a consequence of an El Nino, um, you know, which could lead to spatial and temporal distribution of the monsoons getting disrupted. But those are relatively smaller uh, concerning factors right now. I think the bigger concern, as far as India is concerned, could be from the global side. We're already seeing a pretty steep decline in the U.S. bond deals, and therefore there's a concern that U.S. growth could roll over going forward. Mm. If you look at the most recent data that came out from the Eurozone, you know, I think apart from Germany, pretty much all the other Eurozone markets or the economies are still surprising on the downside. You know, so there is an expectation, of course, that the Eurozone, to combat this, would uh, get into some kind of a QE or, you know, monetary injection at some point of time. But I think global risks, global um, growth concerns, are possibly the biggest worry right now. When you